Dr. Petrovsky, thank you for joining us at Rudo Media Network as a distinguished cancer center in Russia. Could you provide insights into any advancement regarding cancer vaccine given their significant global impact? Uh, hello. Uh, indeed, uh, vaccines uh, are the, uh, one of the uh, most uh, 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 awaiting product uh, from uh, from the scientists who treat uh, cancer uh, and uh, many different uh, labs and many different scientists all over the world are, are working on these uh, uh, projects uh, and uh, trying to use uh, uh, vaccines for different types of uh, cancer. Uh, generally speaking, vaccines are uh, one of the uh, uh, types of immunotherapy, uh, which is uh, uh, very popular in uh, cancer treatment right now. Uh, uh, several years ago, as far as I believe it was in uh, uh, 2019, uh, they received the Nobel Prize for immune therapy uh, for uh, cancer. Uh, so uh, vaccines uh, are also one type of that uh, immune therapy. There are uh, different types of uh, vaccines. Uh, there are dendritic uh, vaccines and uh, that uh, basically uh, the first uh, type of vaccine that was used for uh, treating cancer. Um, the problem with that uh, type of vaccines is uh, uh, that it's necessary to prepare uh, that vaccine for uh, each person. So you have to take the uh, tumor from this particular person uh, and uh, prepare vaccine uh, just for this patient. And uh, this vaccine will not uh, work for another patient. So that makes this process uh, pretty uh, expensive and uh, um, uh, very uh, hard to be prepared uh, in uh, every clinic. Uh, so the second type of vaccine is uh, peptide vaccine, the uh, vaccines uh, that, uh, that is made for uh, uh, neoantigens that are produced uh, in, the, uh, in the tumor and um, uh, using uh, sequencing and then uh, using the a neural network, uh, you can uh, find what types of uh, that neoantigens um, are considered to be uh, tumorigenic and prepare that uh, uh, peptide vaccines uh, for uh, that particular uh, genes and or anti anti genes. Um, uh, this is also could be made just for. Uh, a certain uh, patient, uh, if you take the tumor from uh, uh, from him and then prepare vaccine for uh, this particular patient. Okay, good. Uh, doctor, in 2008, Russia reported the discovery of a vaccine for kidney, uh, kidney cancer. Could you shed light on the subsequent developments and current research efforts regarding vaccines for specific types of cancer? Yes, uh, that, that was the story with the uh, dendritic vaccine. So that's not for all uh, patients with kidney cancer. That was uh, the vaccine that is produced for every particular patient. And for now, we use that vaccines, the dendritic vaccines for different uh, diseases such as uh, melanoma, kidney cancer, um, breast cancer, uh, or arterial cancer, and the uh, so many others. It's uh, now we have uh, we treat more than twenty different uh, locations of tumors with uh, that uh, dendritic vaccines. But unfortunately, uh, as I have already mentioned, it's uh, not very easy to produce that vaccine for for a patient. Uh, it's uh, you need time. You need time to produce that vaccine, and not uh, all the patients have that that time for production because it takes about two, three months uh, to produce that vaccine. So uh, uh, that uh, this type of treatment cannot be routinely used for all the patients. Um, this patient has to be very close to the lab 
uh, for uh, producing of that content. So that's why we're moving to other types of vaccines. Okay. Uh, what is the projected timeline for the development of a cancer vaccine based on current research and advancement uh, in the field? Yeah, so uh, that's what I say. Uh, we, are, uh, we are finishing the preclinical uh, studies right now. And uh, I believe that next year we would be ready to start with uh, uh, clinical trials for peptide vaccines, the multi-peptide vaccines, and also another type of vaccines that are uh, produced in our center right now. It's also a preclinical phase uh, nowadays. Uh, this is RNA vaccines, which are uh, pretty close to those that were used for uh, COVID-19 uh, vaccination. Okay. Uh, could you elaborate on the most prevalent types of cancer among both women and men in Russia? Uh, most common uh, cancers uh, in Russia are uh, breast cancer, lung cancer, colorectal cancer, also stomach cancer, uh, prostate cancer, kidney cancer, in both cancer, women kidney and men. Can, uh, uh, these types of cancer, uh, most of them are in uh, men and women, but speaking about women, that's more breast cancer and gynecological cancer. For men, this is prostate cancer. Okay. Based on your experience with patients, what familial factors are commonly observed among cancer patients, potentially indicating a causative link? Uh, there are several uh, familiar cancers that could be uh, found in Russia. Uh, so uh, I would say the most common would be uh, breast cancer and ovarian cancer associated with uh, uh, BRCA1 and BRCA2 mutations, or it's also called BRCA1, BRCA2. These mutations became popular after uh, the story of uh, Angelina Jolie, who made uh, uh, some preventive surgery because of these uh, uh, mutations. Uh, but now we're, uh, we uh, find uh, these mutations in about uh, five to 10% of uh, uh, all breast cancer patients, which made uh, this number to thousands of uh, women uh, every year. Uh, also, uh, this uh, BRCA mutation could be found in prostate cancer patients and in uh, uh, pancreatic cancer patients. But also, there are some, yeah, some other mutations for uh, colorectal cancer, which is Lynch syndrome, and for kidney cancer, there is uh, uh, von Hippel Landau. Uh, syndrome. So there are several familiar uh, cancers that uh, could be found in population. Okay. Uh, doctor, how do you advise citizens to adopt presentative measure against cancer? Uh, it's, uh, uh, th there are screening programs in Russia. Uh, they are uh, uh, state-established and state-funded. Uh, we have screening programs for breast cancer, uh, uh, also for cervical cancer, that's for women. Uh, we have prostate cancer for men, and for both sexes, we have uh, screening for colorectal cancer. Uh, we also think of uh, starting screening for lung cancer uh, in uh, smoking men. Um, it's not that easy uh, to uh, invite uh, all the uh, targeted population for that screening, but uh, in this field, Russia is on the uh, on its way, on the uh, right way uh, to uh, uh, invite more and more uh, patients um, every year, and uh, that leads to better early diagnosis uh, for these types of cancer annually that we see. Uh, okay, has the Russian government implemented routine early cancer screening program or what measures are in place to encourage citizens to undergo early screening? Uh, nowadays we have uh, uh, one uh, extra day off for all the citizens. Uh, 
uh, that uh, they can uh, uh, spend for uh, that screening for uh, not only for cancer screening but also for screening of heart disease of, of diabetes okay. and so on so uh, this is uh, one of the uh, ways how the government encourages people to uh, uh, take part in these uh, screening programs. Uh, also, there are uh, some medical uh, units in uh, uh, shopping centers, in the parks, when people have their some free time and they can also spend it uh, for uh, their health. Okay, doctor. Uh, in closing, what message would you like to convey to cancer patients who may be watching? Uh, I have uh, several messages. The first message is for uh, healthy people. Uh, uh, it's uh, much better to go to the doctor when you there is no problem and to check your uh, body and uh, go through screening programs to uh, detect cancer on the early stage if uh, uh, it has to be, uh, it has to uh, be found uh, in uh, in your body, and the second the second is for cancer patients that uh, uh, cancer is uh, is a disease. It's not uh, something uh, terrible that would uh, definitely uh, uh, compromise your life. Uh, the uh, most of the cancer diseases could be treated uh, and cured if they are uh, found on early stages and. Uh, uh, even if it's uh, advanced stage of the disease, we have uh, so many different uh, therapeutic uh, options right now to uh, help people with uh, uh, cancer and uh, make their life longer and uh, also with a very good quality of life. So don't be afraid of going to the doctor, going to the cancer center and uh, uh, get uh, necessary treatment of your disease.